Right, okay, a bit of an update then. We are in the middle of the Hebridean Sea. This is Mike, Hi. doing a sterling job, and we've had all weather so far. It's now a very pleasant 15 knots from the southwest. We're just on a beam ridge. We've got about 40 miles to go. We've done a total of 60 from Oban. Been awake for approaching 24 hours since the alarm went off to get to Gatwick. But we're in good spirits, there's uh, five guys and girls sleeping, hopefully sleep, sleeping below. We've turned the engine off, we're sailing, so that's all good. And we've got a rival boat. Our friends over there, you can't see, they're in the middle of the blackness over there, making uh, good, good headway as well. So, just under Genoa right now. I don't think we'll put the main up because it's forecast to get up. And it's three o'clock in the morning, and we're convincing ourselves the sun is coming up. Maybe it will happen soon. I'll let you know. consistent 20 knots the last four hours which has been superb and will touch us down at two o'clock today it's now five so the race is on good luck guys sprinting to gate one for my flight to Barra and there she is Meanwhile, Andrew and Finn the dog had completed 600 miles of driving and were now on their first of two ferries. This is turning out to be a wild ride. It's gusting 25 knots. I think everyone in the crew has had a bit of a kip, so I thought I'd treat myself. I'm not gonna go to sleep, I'll just uh, have a bit of horizontal time. You can only be in the uh, saloon for about 20 seconds and then the seasickness comes on. So I just got horizontal as quickly as I possibly could. And I've asked everyone in the crew to uh, clip on. They're going to restrict the speed to seven knots. We're sailing pretty well under a heavily reefed Genoa. And that's it, just a reefed Genoa. We're on a close reach. We're about 80 degrees off the wind. And the other boat, um, the other boat being, I can't even speak, Explorer of Slate is ahead and they're doing a good job amazingly they've got their main and jib up i think both hugely reefed slab roof three three roofs and uh yeah it's a wild sea out here it's very remote so we've come a long way we'll have completed 100 uh, miles in well maybe 14 hours it's been rapid so let's get there And I've just spotted this cardinal marker, which is great, and it, then we head due west, and we have this tiny gap between the rocks to thread our way through, and then follow a very, very particular course. Um, so I'll show you this cardinal marker outside, it's been a great moment. So 
you may not be able to see, but the cardinal marker is pretty much in line with the clue. Well, how about that? We made it to the Outer Hebrides, and we're in Castle Bay, in Barra, and there's the castle. Kismal Castle was the stronghold of McNeil's clan since the 11th century and has its own freshwater wells. It was abandoned in 1838 when the island was sold. Some of its stone was used as ballast for fishing vessels and some even ended up as paving in Glasgow. In 2001, the castle was leased by the chief clan McNeil to historic Scotland for a thousand years for the annual sum of one pound and a bottle of whiskey. Anthony, <laughs> Natasha, hello, Sam, we, hey, hey Augusta, Ivy, we, Rachel, <laughs> Cheryl, ah, Mike, hello. Charlotte. So we're now heading to the restaurant for the meal, and it's been a good few hours since we landed in Barra. A few of the crew were pretty shell shocked this morning, but uh, amazing what a, a sleep can do. And looking forward to the meal. Really good, <laughs> so here we have Will. Will, how's your journey? Epic. Right, what made it. <laughs> you made it. Did you beat the boats? We didn't beat the boats. <laughs> uh, but they did have the, the head start by about a day. Ah, that's true, <laughs> that's true. You, Will's done remarkably well. He set off uh, this morning and landed on Barra Beach, the only uh, scheduled flights that land on a beach in the UK. And you touched down at two o'clock. We did, yeah. Two o'clock. The, the world's most dangerous airport. Well, bravo. Well done, you survived. Deserve a drink. Cheers. Cheers to that. Cheers to that. Charlotte and Mike had already made it up to the highest point on Barra by 10am, by which point the wind had veered to the north-northwest and was blowing a solid 30 knots. I meanwhile went to check out the local Catholic church in Castle Bay, then on to assemble a team to hike to the next island south of Barra called Vatase, where we had heard there was a great beach. T team assembled, Sam, leading position. The island chain of the Outer Hebrides has six artificial causeways linking the islands, and we were crossing the southernmost from Barra to Vatase. And I'm walking with Charles, and he's currently stationed at the RNLI in Isla. Yeah, I'm based down in Isla, which is a bit bigger than Barra or Vatase, a few more people, we've got about 3,000 opposed to about a thousand people around here. Um, basically an island of whiskey and farming with a bit of fishing. Um, they're very similar, yeah. Yeah, so we're absolutely honoured to have uh, Charles on board with our trip. Being an absolute godsend already on a number of counts. And uh, yeah, you'll be seeing more of Charles later in the week. Sam, make his entrance onto the beach. How are you doing, Sam? Very well, sir. How are you? Yeah, loving it, loving it. So, what do you think about the swim? Could be persuaded. Yeah. 